Uh, we are happy to talk with you today about one of the critical issues facing so many Minnesota families, and that is the cost of housing and the availability of housing. Throughout the pandemic, we have seen how low-income families, moderate-income families, and middle-income families have struggled to address issues like childcare, the cost of health care, the availability of broadband in certain communities to uh, reach their jobs, and the need to show up on the front line for so many workers. Central to everyone's life is housing. The cost of housing, even through a pandemic, has continued to rise. The impact on family budgets and the availability of stable housing continues to impact Minnesota families. And House Democrats are focused on making sure that housing can be affordable and that the costs of housing are not driving families into uh, unhoused, unstable positions or driving out their ability to do other things in their life just because housing is so expensive. I'm happy to be here today with the chair of our housing committee, uh, Representative Houseman, and a housing leader in our caucus, Representative Howard, uh, to outline our caucus's proposals on housing. Representative Houseman. Thank you and good morning everyone. And with that as our motivation, um, I'd like to discuss our legislative agenda to solve Minnesota, Minnesota's housing uh, crisis. Nothing else in life goes well if you don't have a safe place to sleep at night. And because that is something uh, we want to assure for everyone in Minnesota, um, we know that to fix this, to meet this challenge, our investments have to be along the entire housing continuum. And uh, I think that's reflected in the five broad goals we'll have. And I'd like to talk about those five broad goals. So number one, we have to build more homes that Minnesotans can afford. One of the tools that was new to us in 2014 are housing infrastructure bonds. Uh, they are appropriation bonds. And um, uh, before that time, all we had was general obligation bonding for public housing. Um, but appropriation bonds, the housing infrastructure bonds, enable us to partner with nonprofits, Lutheran Social Service, Catholic Charities, Common Bond, Beacon, Aon. And all of those nonprofit partners leverage private dollars. I think it's something like at least three, $3 of private money for every dollar of state money. So it has enabled us that new tool uh, to do uh, much more. And there have been really wonderful, valuable, creative projects that those nonprofits have come to us with. Um, so in 2014, we did 80 million. Uh, why 400 this year? Uh, because Minnesota Housing tells us that they say no to three out of every four requests. Say, they say no to three of every four. If that 400 million were available, the amount of, of additional housing we could provide is, um, is significant. Uh, goal number two, we want to reduce costs for renters and we want to create more homeowners. We need both rental assistance and down payment assistance. Um, in the best of all possible worlds, we'd wish everybody could own, own a home because that's where you build wealth. Um, but that isn't always possible. Often, um, even if they could pay the, the monthly mortgage, they can never put together that down payment. The income inequality that we have um, means that there are just so many people who will just never get that down payment saved. So both rental assistance and down payment assistance are uh, 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 things that we, in order to reduce costs for renters and to create more homeowners. Goal number three, to save the affordable homes we already have. We are told by Aon and others that finding and saving naturally occurring affordable housing is half the cost of building new. So we want to preserve and rehab that housing and make it available. Uh, the threat, by the way, to that particular um, uh, type of housing is the out-of-state corporate investment firms that are coming in. They can pay cash. They buy up, and it's particularly the neighborhoods that have housing that is affordable. And they buy up, they might buy 40 homes and, um, and turn them into to rentals. And so that is a, a threat that uh, some of our bills will, will have to try to solve. Um, and so modernizing and updating uh, public housing um, is an additional one. That's where we do general obligation bonding in the bonding bill uh, for public housing. In 2014, uh, we did 20 million. In, tw in 2020, we went backwards. 
we went 16 million. And so this time we're asking for 100. Uh, modernizing and updating public housing has a huge backlog. I was told a few years ago that the backlog is something like $550 million. So we've got to start working on that. Uh, goal number four, though our goal is permanent housing in the best, best of, uh, of all possible worlds, there will be emergencies for which shelters are needed. We want them to be safe. So resources are needed for services. And not only do we need the shelters, but we need the resources for services that provide pathways to people in that situation to get to more stable housing. Um, and so though the, the we're accommodating shelters, it is always with the idea that along with them, we, we provide the resources that, get, that, move, that move people to more stable housing. And finally, our fifth goal, and this one has probably gotten more publicity recently, and that is we need emergency rental and landlord assistance to get us through a gap to June 1st, 2022. When we um, had the eviction moratorium, uh, it was quickly um, clear to all of us that when that moratorium ends, there's going to be a cliff. And we uh, uh, proceeded to, uh, to have an off ramp to avoid that. And um, one of, the, one of the things we did was um, with help from federal funding, had the Rent Help MN program uh, that attempted to um, pay the, the, for all those people who were most affected by the pandemic. And often they were the employees in bars and restaurants and retail, the very people who were maybe one paycheck away from not being able to pay their rent. And so uh, with the help of, of federal funding and the uh, Rent Help MN, uh, we wanted to hold both renters and landlords harm, harmless. Um, the good news is that uh, when that money is all expended, all the applications have now been ended. And, and when that is all expended, $450 million will be in the hands of renters to, con I mean, to, uh, to into the hands of landlords so that they can continue to provide safe, stable housing for renters. But the funding was out and they stopped applications and the problem is still there. So we need, we want to find a way to fill the gap through June 1st, 2022. So that is uh, finally the thing. So those are our five, five broad goals. I'll turn it over to Rep. Sam Howard, who's vice chair of our committee uh, for further information. Thank you, Chair Hausman and to folks that are joining us. Uh, this session, House Democrats are going big on housing, and that means going big on real, tangible economic relief on the number one expense for most family budgets, the cost of your rent or your mortgage. Uh, Minnesota faced a housing crisis before this pandemic began. Uh, our supply-demand mismatch with our housing has created uh, what was described by the Star Tribune as the nation's worst housing shortage uh, in the country. And that impact is felt by higher rents, higher prices for homes, and a real lack of options for Minnesotans across the state. Uh, this crisis is contributing to our workforce shortages. It's limiting our economic growth and potential. It's harming children, and it's worsening our racial equity gaps. Uh, but with a significant historic budget surplus, we have the opportunity, and I would say the obligation, to make historic investments in education, or excuse me, in housing, that meet uh, Minnesotans where they're at. Whether you're struggling with homelessness or trying to buy your first home, uh, we have an opportunity to address the housing challenges across the continuum. Um, before opening up for questions, I wanna just comment on a few specific aspects of our package uh, that highlight, we're focused on challenging the status quo and thinking outside of the box because we think that's what's necessary to address our crisis. Uh, and one of those is our housing tax aid proposal which aims to provide $100 million per year in aid directly to counties and cities to address the unique housing challenges in their community. Uh, we've heard from communities in greater Minnesota that are really struggling to create workforce housing. Uh, we're hearing from suburban and urban communities struggling uh, to build the deeply affordable housing. And this plan allows communities to invest and address their specific needs. Uh, we're also proposing to make housing more affordable with direct economic assistance uh, first with state-based rental assistance, uh, which we've seen is so vital, 
and $100 million in down payment assistance to greatly expand the dream of home ownership uh, for first time home buyers. Uh, this plan focuses both on the here and now and the kind of investments that will pay off for decades to come. Uh, our plan calls for an immediate injection of resources so that Rent Help MN can reopen and provide Minnesotans uh, with the assistance they need. Uh, since the pandemic began, we've committed to preventing evictions amidst a pandemic, and we're still in a pandemic. That's why it's so vital uh, we move forward quickly to address this uh, issue. Uh, and the balance of our uh, investments, though, provide real tangible benefits for years, really decades to come. Uh, if we succeed in building and preserving the homes we need to uh, close our uh, gap in housing, we'll bring down the cost of housing for everyone. We'll expand housing opportunities for our workers and families all across the state, and we can increase student achievement and reduce racial gaps. Uh, as I've said before, whether we're talking about addressing our workforce shortage, providing economic relief to families that are being squeezed or eliminating racial gaps in health and education, all roads lead back to home. Uh, this is our moment to make a big difference, uh, and we cannot, cannot let this moment pass us by. And with that, uh, we'd open it up to any questions. If reporters could use the raise your hand function or just make a note in the chat, we'll be sure that you're called on. It looks like first person with the question here is Peter Callahan. You want me to voice it, huh? Okay. Um, first is just technical. Um, I'm just trying to do the math. Um, and is it 1.6 billion? Am I doing that right? Or is it 1.8 billion? I believe it's 1.8 billion, but we can. Okay, do that that's fine. Um, yep. But my next question is more substantive on rent help and, and to understand the difference between the $400 million cash and the $300 million cash. It looks like 300 million goes to sort of the current rent help program. Um, and are you planning, are you proposing that applications be reopened for that one? And then Correct. secondly, describe how then this 400 million more ongoing program dovetails in with, with what's been going on so far. So our best estimate for that, imme that immediate gap to get us to June 1, 2022 uh, was 300 million. Some of our advocates have, have tried to help us with that number. Um, but as best as we can tell, the, the 300 million um, fills the, the gap through June 1, 2022. Um, but uh, what we learned, of course, is how great the need is, and that's not going to end. Uh, with income inequality, um, that, is, that gap is simply not going to end. And so we do need uh, ongoing um, rental assistance. And I don't know, Representative Howard, if, you're, if you wanna talk specifically about uh, several years ago, Beacon, which is a faith-based group, came to me because they had already identified um, Section 8 vouchers at the federal level aren't working because people apply for them. They qualify, but they wait for years. And so Beacon began to come to us several years ago already to say, we need to do something about this. And uh, Representative Howard has been uh, working on that bill uh, that, that looks for long term. Our fiscal note is enormous. Uh, for that bill uh, to help everyone. Uh, but we're at the early stages of figuring out um, how we can move in that direction. Well, again, would you, uh, Representative Howard, maybe, um, would you do it more through a Section 8 um, type uh, program or continue a rent help type program that's based on the state vetting uh, applicants? The, the delineation is, well, with the emergency rental assistance, we have a need for speed um, just because the challenge is right before us. I mean, we need to open rent, rent Help MN yesterday. <laughs> and so the in talking with folks, the quickest way to provide that assistance is to inject resources and open up Rent Help MN, use the infrastructure they have in place to help provide a bridge uh, to June 1st. And, and why that date's important is when we passed our eviction moratorium, uh, we provided uh, uh, protections for renters through June 1st. And we think it makes sense to make sure that we're providing assistance through then, especially because we are still in a pandemic um, that's hurting incomes for workers through no fault of their own. Um, ongoing, we would use the, the model in what's House File 40, our bring, the Bring It Home Bill. Uh, and that would utilize local housing uh, 
agencies that already administer Section 8. Basically, this plan puts state dollars in a way that mimics uh, the infrastructure for existing Section 8 vouchers. So there's elegance and simplicity where we don't have to create new infrastructure. We can utilize existing housing authorities to, to do what they already know how to do quite well and provide uh, housing aid and assistance in, in their communities. All right, looks like Max Nestrag had a follow up to that. Yeah, I see that in the chat. The, the 300 would be the sort of bridge. Um, and then the, the 400 million per, for a year, uh, it would sort of depend on how soon we can get that program stood up. I don't know if we could get it stood up by June 1st and that might be a next year fiscal thing. We still have to work out those details. And of course, we have to hope that uh, when we do our supplemental bill, our target is such that it um, allows, allows for this. Sorry, I live on Larpenter Avenue, so the sirens are going to come through here. Um, I have another one if Scott or uh, Max or have theirs answered. Um, can you comment on the, the concerns with, the, with the Minnesota housing? Um, it seems unlikely that the Senate is uh, cool right now with putting more money into that program. Um, is that, can you just sort of first say how you felt that program has been run? And secondly, whether or not there isn't uh, an agency, which sounds like you might be thinking that, that there isn't an agency that was really better suited to do that. It just seemed not to be within their uh, DNA to be vetting doing eligibility, distributing money, that's not what the housing agency has done in the past. And, and, and do you think that's an issue that you guys should be responding to? My uh, second committee hearing was specifically on Rent Help MN. And I don't know if any of you listened into that. If you didn't, if you could um, uh, go online uh, or contact my committee administrator, the PowerPoint that day was enormously helpful and, and just had a massive amount of information from day one of their program uh, to when they uh, discontinued the uh, applications. Uh, and so if any of you didn't hear that, that PowerPoint I think is a very helpful way to get at, at what was happening. Um, just, I guess a word about the Senate bill on uh, calling for an audit. The confusion I have for that is Normally, you audit something because you want to reform it. You want recommendations and how would we change it? In the case of Rent Help MN, uh, that was tied so to the federal funding that um, we think, I mean, they, they in effect have, have ended that. And so it's hard to know the purpose of an audit for a program that has ended. Um, on the other hand, uh, what we want to do is whatever we put in its place, we want to get that right. And so, um, learning from uh, the experience uh, that they went through and that they shared with us at our committee hearing, I think would be very helpful. We need to study that carefully. Just to add on to that, um, you know, it, it to, to Trevor Hausman's point, I did find it to, to ask for an audit, the questions the Senate are, they're asking, in a sense, I feel like they're not asking the most important questions. The most important questions are, how are Minnesota renters and landlords uh, going to keep their heads above water amidst this pandemic? And the need is significant. It, there's no question that Minnesota Housing was asked to put together a, the size of the program and scope of what they were asked to do with Rent Help MN was unprecedented. Um, and so it's not surprising that they face some challenges to get that rolling. Those are challenges we saw all across the country. But the reality is the program, uh, once it was up and running and, and firing on all cylinders, tens of millions of dollars were flowing out the door every month, uh, going to landlords, keeping renters afloat. It was working and working well. The challenge is the money ran out. Um, and that's where our focus should be as a legislature and where the focus should be from the governor to make sure that we have resources in place to help Minnesotans weather this storm. Any other questions? Thank you all for being with us today. Lots to talk about and lots to do. Challenge is great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.